Good evening, everyone, or good day, wherever you are. Thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, tonight's topic will be Stonewall and Beyond, Half a Century of Queer America. And we'll go over somewhat briefly what the Stonewall riots were about. And then we'll go straight on to talk with my wonderful guest, Susan. Welcome. Thank How are you. we doing? Doing well. It's good to see you. Now, uh, as just be, as be, before we went on, we talked about uh, that. Could you perhaps introduce yourself and tell tell us what you're about and stuff like that? Certainly. Uh, my name is Susan, and um, I'm um, decades old. <laughs> And I live in um, Arkansas now in the United States. Um, I grew up um, mostly in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, and I'm bisexual. <laughs> so um, I definitely have experienced um, being in the closet and coming out of the closet in America during the decades following Stonewall. Um, I don't know how much I actually I'm and I'm married to a, a to a man now and we've been together 20 years very happily um, and he knew before we married that he was the first man in my life that I was open with about my sexuality um, right off the bat uh, within a few days after our meeting and he was totally cool with it um, in his opinion, love doesn't recognize gender. And um, we fell in love. So what are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> anyway, Stonewall in Manhattan, New York City, early hours of the morning, June 28th, 1969. Yeah. We had the beginning of the Stonewall riots from the Stonewall Inn. Now, what do you remember, you know, how do you remember hearing the first time about this, this riots? Before we went on, we, we had a bit of a chat that you were in sort of a non-political bubble, if you wish. Mm -hmm. um, so how aware were you at this time, the su the summer of summer of love '69, about your you know bisexuality and such at this point? Well, it's merely coincidental, but it was about 1969 that I realized that. Uh, now, and I hope your viewers will understand that um, the terminology that I use. <clears throat> may not be necessarily what's considered politically politically correct in this day and age. Uh, most of what I will use is the way we talked back then. Um, I grew up in a non-political family where things such as um, being queer was not discussed. It was a don't ask, don't tell, kind of a baptist -y kind of a family. And if something such as Stonewall, uh, to be honest, Heidi, I never even heard of Stonewall until I was in my 30s. Uh, if something like that came on the news, it was turned off. I mean, my family really could have originated the phrase, don't ask and don't tell. It was pretty much the kind of family where if you don't talk about it, then it doesn't exist. So um, what tiny bit I knew about Stonewall was that, uh, and I can speak frankly, right? Yeah, yeah, off you go. Okay, what little bit I did know about Stonewall was a bunch of queers in New York went nuts and had a big riot and there was loads of violence and uh, the general attitude um, in my environment 
And I want everyone to know that I'm speaking strictly from personal experience. Okay. And that is a point. Uh, in, yeah. my, in my environment, um, this just goes to show you, you know, um, queers are, um, you know, they're really out there and they're violent and they want to take over your home and they're going to rape and molest your children and all of this. And so I certainly wasn't going to mention to anybody that I had a very strong pull towards other females. Uh, I wasn't even going to act on it. So there was super suppression going on there. And then when I finally saw a documentary on Stonewall with some wonderful people who were actually there talking about it in retrospective, uh, in a retrospective way, um, I realized now looking back what an important event that was. Yeah, I think many, even many, okay, I'm probably th talking, mostly talking about cis and straight folk. They, I don't think at the time they realized as to how important these events were. And, but in the queer, in the LGBT plus community, those events have never been forgotten. It's been 51 years. And now we have, in the end of, typically in the end of June, we have Pride events. Um, I don't think even today, many, many, I've met LGBT plus people who, who had never heard of Stonewall and what Stonewall was all about. And I had to explain to them, or basically, Google the fuck out, you know, if you, I don't expect everyone to know what so what Stonewall was, when it happened, etc. but we still live, me and me as a young, of the younger generation and those younger than me uh, live with the legacy of, of the events that were started or that began in Stonewall in early hours of the morning, June 28th, 69. Uh, actually, we, now that you, <clears throat> we, I think that this is the bit previous context with, with regards to, uh, by uh, you and many uh, and pe uh, people, you and as well as many other people being bisexual, uh, we have a, we have Dutch heretic, hello there, uh, I bet 50% of humans are bisexual to a, de a degree. What are, you, what, what are your, your thoughts on this, Susan? Um, well, I'm reluctant to um, put numbers or... But what's your gut feeling? Uh, on how my gut, this might be. My, my gut feeling is that in America, if it weren't such a, um, uh, still to this day, actually in many uh, communities, if it weren't such a uh, disgusting thing, uh, I think there would probably be a lot more people. Yeah, indeed. Uh, who would at least, um, ex, uh, if I can use terms like experiment or experiment, yeah, yeah, you they just would, as long as you, uh, yeah, just as long as it's not as it doesn't doesn't offend too many people. Yeah, because and uh, I I told uh, Heidi I want to say to the viewers I'm very nervous about this because I've never spoken publicly on this issue. So I'm really super nervous and I do not want in any way to offend anyone. I'm just speaking off the cuff and speaking freely. But I do think that more people, if they did not feel so suppressed by conservatism 
and being um, labeled in some negative way, if they felt freer to explore their sexuality, I do believe more people would. Yeah, yeah, that's, I kind of agree, but in the past decades, oh, hey, uh, we have our common friend, dear Arthur Weber. Arthur! In the chat. Anyway, Susan, we do support you to help you overcome your nervousness. Thank you. So, so there you go. Any, anyway, uh, how do you... How do you think um, this kind of portrays back back a few decades? I mean, you said you you were in in the closet for a for a good good chunk of years. How much do you think that I'm not necessarily talking about you, but others that were in the closet, maybe married kids? Etc. You know, straight marriage, cis heteronormative uh, life, but they had these feelings, but couldn't didn't feel comfortable uh, talking about it until until in, until later in life. How much do you think they, you know, back in sixties and seventies, went about? Um, sort of testing around well, and you I, know, I, behind the, behind everyone's back i i actually am more comfortable actually just talking about <clears throat> myself because you know we don't live in other people's heads and so anything would obviously be speculation on my part mm -hmm. uh, it comes to but go ahead but um with myself around 1969 in Kansas City, Missouri. And here again, I digress, I digress a lot. So just stop me and redirect me at any time. Of course I will, of course I will, yeah, go on. Okay, thank you. So <clears throat> I was looking through a chest of drawers, a bureau of drawers for something. I don't even remember what, and it was my dad's drawer. And there was a paperback novel in there. And it was the summer of 69. And uh, so I was out of school and at home alone. And I uh, was like, oh, what is, oh, what is this book? Oh, some reading material. So I started reading this book. Well, the book turned out to be um, erotica. And... <laughs> No, yeah. In the Go on. okay, and in this in the storyline of this book, there was uh, there were two women who had a sexual experience together, and I. It's the first time, Heidi, that I went. Um. This really turns me on. Can I say that? See, I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, okay, okay. good. This is not the, this show isn't exactly PG. <laughs> and and I, was, kids. I was kind of taken aback. I mean, I was like, well, this is because I wasn't at this point, I wasn't a virgin. I I had had sex with a boy and it was fine. Uh, I mean, it was okay, but reading this book and reading that experience between these two women, I was like, wow, wow, kind of a reaction. <laughs> and I thought, am I, am I a queer? Uh, no, I can't. No, I'm no, I'm not. No, I was raised to be a housewife and a mom and that's my plan. And that's what I'm going to do. So I didn't act on anything, but I realized as time went by, this is so crazy. Yeah, it went by. As time no went by, that when I would have heterosexual sex, 
it was not fulfilling unless I imagined that the man was a woman. Well, there we go. <sighs> queer, queer, yeah. Now, you think, or I'm thinking, I am the only person in the whole world. You know, there's so many events other than sexual that can happen to us in our de developmental years, our young years, adolescent years, so on and so forth. Um, where you're just, you don't even want to admit that you might be that thing, that there's something really wrong with that, that you're sick. Um, you know, and I had a mom who, who made little re offhanded remarks like, uh, well, when they get together, I wonder how they decide who's the husband and who's the wife. Um, you know, just little. <laughs> but yeah, I kind of get, you know, I kind of get what you mean. And, you know, she was, she was the child of her time in a way. And, but and then kind of projected the the people of her age uh were kind of the the people a lot of the people that were in the in stonewall era that were actually there you know the were of of her age or similar age to her i mean it was at the time, kind of, how shall I put this? This kind of thinking was sort of breastfed into the the age group of of your age group, and then those who were in the late teens, early twenties at the time of of Stonewall, mm -hmm. and then. Many, uh, on the other hand, many of those, many of your age, maybe early twenties, were actually there in Stonewall Inn at, and in and around Manhattan and New York City on the actual action, if you will. Uh, how do you? How do you? Hang on, I think I'll take a comment first. Dutch heretic is saying some deny it and some reject it with regards to the bisexual nature of people. And we have trans atheists, we have like gender, sexuality is a large spectrum. I would go as far to say that even one cis straight person will sit on that spectrum different to an other cis straight person. And I I would have to agree at, up to a certain point. Well, no, just... pretty much all the way, I would have to um, agree with trans atheists that sexual, sexual orientation is indeed a, a spectrum. You know, you, I think it was, Aaron, Aaron Ra, so a few years ago, he said that you can't be 100% straight. You can't be 100% gay. There's there's something in between. And I do agree. When it and this, as trans atheist is saying here, it also applies to gender as well as a sort as a social construct as well as biological sex, of which I debated a while back uh, in June on Agree to Disagree channel. Go check it out. Good material. Uh, self shilling here. But anyway, and then we have, yeah, uh, I'll take some comments still. We have trans atheist proceeds to say that problem in society teaches the similarities of people, but individuality is about finding differences 
between people, not the similarities. Yeah. And Dutch heritage, Dutch heritage goes on goes on to say that it, it really depends on the location of the society. Yes, you are Dutch heretic. You are absolutely correct. Um, Americans are uptight. Oh yeah, yeah, they are. Um, and uh, this, this is sexuality. I mean, you would think in this day and age, honestly, that we would have progressed, at least if not to a level of tolerance. Uh, pardon me, if, if not to a level of acceptance, at least to a level of tolerance. Mm -hmm. And, but uh, this is an uptight place to live. And I live now in a small community, less than 10,000 in the entire county, in a southern rural state where uh gee whiz you know <laughs> uh, you just don't talk you don't you still to this day heidi 2020 you don't talk about these issues openly yeah it, it's that's the kind of kind of thing i i one of the things i really wanted to point out in this in this uh stream and you know, in our conversation with you, Susan, in general, it's kind of, uh, it's not just the, the Southern Baptist preacher kind of societies, you know, they have a huge impact, you know, Southern Baptist preachers and, and stuff. Yeah. I won't even say the names. I'll get, yeah. I'll just probably get, get my account shut down. Yeah. Um, I think we all know. We know. We all know who. We yeah, are. but anyway, it's still in the deep south. For example, Arkansas, Texas, and so on. It's still even. Is even though it's been fifty years, fifty-one years now, it the message put forth by the I think heroic action actions of the LGBT plus people in the Manhattan as well as it, the entire New York City that went on to the went along with you know took part eventually when the LGBT plus they just hurt and went to an aid and then they spread spread from there but the aftermath of apparent it's clear it, it it has kind of been always clear to me that even that even now the aftermath and as well as the the pos immensely positive legacy we have today from stonewall hasn't has reached from New York City to Australia, Kiwis, Japan, the tip of Chile. I bet there are LGBT plus scientists in Antarctica. But then it but on the other hand, it hasn't reached the southern the entire continental US. It's how do you how do you figure this out? I mean, do you have any any idea as to how this is possible that the immense positive legacy of Stonewall has reached the, the entire world, but not in the entire continental US? Conservatism. Do you think there's there's any way of kind of there's there's sort of a I think, I think there are ways of breaking through this effect of conservatism, which has been in the states for who knows how long, and it still it still prevent still prevents this kind of uh, 
there's such a joyful, such a happy thing to to be sort of just spreading in instead of hatred. What, well, what do you think of this? in this part of the US, it's all tied up. It's it's it, it's complicated. It can get complicated because it's tied up with religion, and it's tied up with fear mongering. Those who are either fully indoctrinated into re religion mm -hmm. or um, uh, well, because there's a there's a scripture that gets used um, about men laying with men and, you know, that this is unnatural and that you're going to go to hell. If you're queer, you're going to go to hell and you're going to burn forever in hell as an abomination. Yeah, yeah it's it's from Leviticus, isn't it? And something um, like I'm that, just, but it doesn't it doesn't really matter. But it's it still like, amazing that that the what, same what matters. Yeah. Well, what matters in that context is how that is tied into political conservatism, the preaching of it from pulpits, televangelism, and things of that nature that folks like me that aren't even involved in any of that, it's like, I, I just, I don't want to deal with um, having to justify I don't want to have to rationalize. I don't want to have to explain yeah. myself. And I sure as hell don't want people who don't know me up in my business uh, judging me, you know, mm -hmm. and what. So I'm not an activist. I'm not uh, even necessarily politically active. I'm so far out of the loop on current events um, because of uh having isolated myself and having yeah. been in trouble for a number of years it's embarrassing to be frank yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, here in this part of the country heidi it's just uh to be uh, to be a lesbian and to be a my my lesbian partner that i was with for uh almost seven years cohabitating it was okay for everybody in the world to know that we were queers except our families we were just roommates that's how weird it can get here you develop cover stories for your lifestyle you know and now we can actually we can see hang on yeah there we can actually see susan's cat so now we can actually uh get get the youtube algorithm happy that's that right we have a cat, video. Cat, video. cat video now that we don't have arthur here to show show one of his cats for the youtube algorithm just to have just the oh <laughs> they they're usually napping this time of day my husband okay. somewhere, and I somewhere in the other corner there anyway yeah. this is just you know off the side track because cats are cute uh, I'm trying to, who, there are actually three cats, right? There are three, where, see? Now we have three. Now the YouTube algorithm is very much content yeah. with cute. Okay, now we have a cat video. <laughs> cat part of the stream so we can get YouTube algorithm happy. <laughs> Any, yeah. And this, lovely, this lovely friend of ours again wants to talk about gay stuff. Oh, oh. Blow out the candle so he doesn't knock it over. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, we? <laughs> yeah, we we were in the kind of conservative issues. There's, yeah. we have all, even as I as I understand it. If correct me if I'm mistaken, uh, the same kind of values that justified the anti LGBT plus legislation that were, you know kept coming up in the 50s and 60s, the values, the anti-LGBT plus that 
were there there then uh here's i'll uh, still here it would i be correct in saying that or or um is that a bit far-fetched it that's what it seems to me as a young young non-american well um if one uh, i'm i'm Re, I'm replaying in my mind old uh, news footage of hearings on gay rights. And it would always boil down to the same argument. Marriage is between a man and a woman. And there were no, in the 90s, when I was actually living, uh, cohabitating with who I thought was going to be my life partner. <laughs> Didn't work out, but. Um, yeah, they always. <laughs> she, um, you know, it, we never even dreamed that here in Arkansas, there would ever be a hope of us ever legally being married. So there was all kinds of legal wrangling that you had to do to have like a contract drawn up in regards to your real estate that you own together, vehicles you own together, uh, the beneficiary of your life insurance. Um, had either one of us been hospitalized? Um, my mother would have been able to override my partner being able to see me in the hospital uh, by just saying she's not family. Um, you know, uh, so in, in Arkansas, um, I honestly don't even know what the current legal rights of the LGBT community are, if there are any. I've been leading a straight life, what would be called a straight life, because I'm in a relationship with a man mm -hmm. uh, for 20 years. And so I'm really out of the loop on, on what the rights yeah. are these days. But I do know that the, here again, going back to the personal issues, the, the shame and the keep your mouth shut about it, I can remember saying to my mom one time when I was trying to tell her, I really wanted her to know that, that I'm by, you know me, I'm okay. I'm not a different person than I was before I told you this. Um, but you couldn't even, I'm sorry, I, I'm kind of losing my train of thought, but you could, you couldn't even have a decent conversation with, you know, I could tell my boss. Yeah, my but not boss your mom. Gay, my boss was a gay man. Yeah, that makes it easier, yeah, doesn't it? And I could sit and chat with him all day and all night, and he would put me at ease on different issues uh, on personal level, you know. But um, so it's like everybody you know knows you're gay, Ex or by except uh, except your family, and you can't and you have no rights with your partner. Yeah, it's it's just screwed up. I mean, as far even, as we even sir, today, as far as my partner and I were concerned, we were married. Yeah, we 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 genuinely loved one another. Um, and now trust me, I had plenty of lusty relationships with yeah. her, but this was the only woman that I literally was in love with her. Yeah. And we, we couldn't own anything together legally as a married couple. It mm -hmm. had to be a freaking contractual agreement using a lawyer. And if one of us had died while we were together, the other one's family would have come in. I mean, we even had a deal with each other that if I die, get rid of this, get rid of that, go through this box, throw that. 
Yeah, it, it's, it's protect one another. I can't even imagine, you know. Uh, and our I mean, agreement was the people we were protecting one another from were our families. <laughs> Not the people we worked with or who were our friends. I don't yeah, know. It's just and, crazy, and it can make you crazy, kind of. Yeah, it, it because the concept of all that is is just mind-boggling. Well, that, first, you know, I I'm not a dupe. I hate duplicity, and yeah, I don't use the word hate. Very often, hate is is a really strong word that I feel is way overused. So for me to use that word, but to be duplicit, so for, leading a double life sucks. It's taxing emotionally. If you're someone who appreciates honesty. Being a liar is very makes you very uncomfortable, of and misrep and misrepresenting yourself to to people. Uh, you know, I could only be real with people who were in the LGBT community. Yeah, and I might add that even then, I got some judgment because oh, you lived for 30 some odd years pretending to be straight. So I got some judgment on that from, from the LGBT it's community. No difference. You know, it doesn't, I don't think it, it doesn't many make any, you any less LGBT plus if you, <laughs> if you live say 80 years or hundred years in a, <laughs> in a tight little closet, you know, it's, yeah. I just you're, I had to do what you know? I had to do feel. what I I had to do what I was comfortable with. Yeah, of course. And um, so and it was kind of cute actually. Um, after going to several um social events as well as like some great big gatherings like women's uh, retreats and stuff like that, uh, I people started calling me a lipstick lesbian. Because you, I remember you, know, you using that. Now. I wear lipstick. I wear jewelry. I'm I'm uh, I'm feminine, pretty much on the feminine side. And so I would be like, no, I'm not a lesbian. I'm bisexual. Oh, but you look like a lisp lipstick lesbian. <laughs> I think yeah, you mentioned yeah, you mentioned about that some months ago, somewhere. <laughs> You know, earlier this year when we had a chat. When you and I were first. I can't remember the context. <laughs> but, but hey, look, uh, now that we are on the bit of a positive side at the moment, uh, just a moment ago when we showed the cats. Yeah. Not the, not the conspiracy cats who was here before, last week. Okay. Uh, he'll be back for a... Uh, by the way, Conspiracy Cats will be on this channel for part two. So awesome. Look for I it. enjoyed. I, 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 now we not have, sure. I don't want to be over patronizing, but I really enjoyed that episode. Yeah. It was very actually, Yeah, I've had previous contacts and and yeah. They will at at least at least most likely there will be. I can't promise anything. For sure, he's a busy guy. Anyway, we had the cats. Our dot. Uh, there's a there's a lad called Arthur. This is probably an an inside joke. Muse, meows lock lock no more. <laughs> well, because when I was first discovering YouTube, I was afraid to use my real name. So my uh, one of my granddaughters set me up, and I my um, moniker or whatever you call it, my handle, my fake name was Lip Locked No More. Yeah. So now oh, okay. I'm house like, no more. <laughs> uh, I hope that Mr. Castin get pissed off too much that I revealed that he might that he that probably that will be a part two. That I really well, as, as I recall when he was on last week, I, I 
you guys talked about having a part two. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, he'll let me know with regards to his grievances. If, if See, I would, so be more, be it. I would be more and, interested um, yeah. in finding out how sex ed is being handled in the U.S. now. Yeah. Because we I... Kinda, yeah, we were kind of more concentrating more, more on uh the uk system but huh. i at the moment i don't have contacts to any us th teachers that i could get the, get the sex ed with regards to lgbt plus because my this isn't really a yeah anyway Okay, I was moving um, on. Uh, well, and I was thinking about the Stonewall. Yeah, and I don't want to keep going back because I know you're wanting to progress. No, oh, no. Uh, Susan, but, no, well, think, go uh, go back as many times as you need because the first part of the topic of this live stream says Stonewall and beyond. So uh, go back as many times as you wish. You know. As I so, look back at that era, the courage that it must have taken for those wonderful people to take to the streets. Mm -hmm. because, okay, in 1969, the mo and, and the people there were adults, so they grew up in what here in the States we refer to as the Eisenhower years, the yeah. Eisenhower era. Okay, of the 50s, coming out of World War II, where you had this perceived America where everything is blissful, everything's heterosexual, all the guys are clean shaven and have short hair, the wife is in the kitchen, it's leave it to beaver in the United States. And what we're being fed media-wise is very sterile, uh, in my opinion. Um, so the courage that it took, must have taken, for these wonderful people to take to the streets of New York in the summer of 1969 and say, look, this is who we are. and just stand up for themselves and to stand up for people like me. And even if they, I don't know if they knew they were doing it honestly, but they were standing up for people like me. I don't know that I would have had the courage to come out to my kids. I mean, I was so scared, Heidi, when I came out in 93, I was married. Um, my husband knew that I had met this woman and that I wanted to explore this part of my life. But in the States, you're so scared. Uh, I had a, a granddaughter who was still in diapers. My, my son had, I was terrified that they would not let me see my granddaughter because a lot of people and this makes me so angry. A lot of people equate lesbianism or being gay with being a child molester. And I was so afraid that they won't even let me see my granddaughter. And that is all coming out of that Eisenhower era where these great people had courage that people like me didn't have. And if they hadn't have stood up for their rights, you and I, I don't know where we would be. I, I certainly wouldn't be here talking to you about this right now. Look, I we wouldn't we wouldn't be here tonight, well today, well this afternoon for you talking about this if it wasn't for the the people 
in in New York City starting as of early hours of the morning, 28th of July. Neither of us would, would be here. And it, we wouldn't have this. We, I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here, lovely viewers. Susan, you wouldn't be here because we would be, if they had, had they not gone to the streets in the Big Apple, we wouldn't have the, the possibility and the liberty of discussing this issue yes. on on a platform. Yes. On a platform like YouTube, yes. which is I which is American owned, owned by an American cor corporation. Guess what? This platform wouldn't allow this kind of content. Not if, at all. Because if Stonewall, if Stonewall hadn't happened, uh, and and and, uh, and do people know what Stonewall itself actually was? You know, it was Stonewall Stonewall Inn. Yeah, it was a little bitty hole in the wall hangout. Yeah, there. it was. They had no and, running water in 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 their in the facility. There, there was no running water. Uh, I don't think there was any electricity. And it's just like this little dump of a dive. But you could be together there. You could be out there. And um, so it's literally like this, this huge, wonderful thing has happened 51 years later because of the courage that those people had and and the trend you know trans transsexuality uh was even kind of um you know you didn't i had i had one friend uh and that was like really under the you didn't talk about that and at stonewall uh there's actually an excellent documentary and I can't think of what it's called now, but it has Stonewall in the title, where uh, a trans person takes the literally takes the stage by by force almost, and yeah. speaks and speaks their mind. Pardon me, I'm going to put a yeah a nicotine drop in my mouth here. <laughs> but yeah. uh, Go on. Body, I'm also a closet smoker. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, now, a... I honestly see nowadays there there see I I don't want I have people in my family that I have not talked to them about talking about them so I'm not going to reveal you know things without permission. Yeah. But I have a number of people in my family one who is a teenager now a young teenager. Yeah. Who I believe has uh, probably doesn't even have the knowledge of Stonewall and, and the benefit. I learned a new term. You're going to think I'm an, a real idiot. You know, I mentioned that I'm not up. Excuse me, a motorcycle was going by. I'm a real uh, out of touch with current events. I had never yeah, heard. The, probably done. Well, I had never heard the term pansexual. I'm like, what the what? hell does it mean? It, it, what, what is pansexual? What was that? Pansexual. Oh, yeah, so pansexual, said, yeah. So I said to another person in my family, I don't know what that means. Well, basically, it was explained to me. It means I can love whoever I want to. I can love another female. I can love a male. I can love a trans person if I want to. Yeah, gender doesn't matter. That gender absolutely has no bearing. And once again, it goes back to my friend and my husband's philosophy. Love doesn't recognize gender. Yeah. So this, this, young one, this young one in my family doesn't like 
to be away from the person who's really significant to them. So I'm like, well, bring them with you when you come to visit. And you can sleep in the hide of bed together. I, that would have never happened in my no way. If that I way wanted, back in, close, yeah. If I wanted to be close to that other female, we would have been sneaking around, like lying about where you know we're going to the movies and go to the drive in mm -hmm. and make out in the back seat. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it would have been as cunning as putting a tail on it, a tail on it, and calling it a weasel. Yeah, and then going yeah. about. So I can actually, even with my lack of knowledge of current events and so forth, I can actually see in my immediate family the benefits of, of June 1969 in New York City has trickled yeah. down to at least as far south as the state that's just a little bit north of me. So, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of being a bit quite a bit younger it, and being and having been born and raised in a in a liberal country oh, of course we have these this douchebags here but uh it's uh, hard, and it's really hard to it's hard it's, it's it's really hard to get the concept of of these past decades as a LG, as a LGBT plus I was born in 1987 so, so and I we got the registered partnership law in Finland in don't quote me here but it's 2002 I was 15 so and we and we had a female president at the time um, who was also the chair of a, a national LGBT plus organ, human rights organization when the when homosexuality was removed from the diagnostic criteria that so that it was no longer an, an illness <laughs> It wasn't that it wasn't an illness. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. It was it was viewed as an illness, yeah. like well, six years before I was born. So it's kind of, and I was fifteen when we got the 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 civil partnership. So it's kind of a bit weird, maybe in a sense that, and then thinking now that we have the same sex marriage and then and i've been married before with a fem legal female partner as a legally female myself uh and it has been possible it has been made possible for me as a result of the the activism that was started um, almost what twenty eight years prior. Yeah, it has been said, and it, it it's just it's humbling, you know. It is. It's really humbling. It, it's very humbling to to actually own actually own what someone else's courage has allowed. Yeah, indeed. Uh, yeah. It was so long, so long before I was even born uh, that these brave, courageous people stood up for themselves. You know. Well, I doubt. I doubt seriously that I would ever have come out as a bisexual had it not been for their courageous actions. Um, I think it has affected by this point, by this point in 2020, the events that that started, as you said, 
from a hole in a wall back in, back in summer of 69 in nyc it has affected tens hundreds of millions of people yeah i mean and in your lifetime in 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 this entire half a decade you've been around to witness the change that came since Stonewall to 2020. It's amazing, isn't it? You know, if you really think about it. Well, when you think about, when I think about that, I, um, I was scared. I felt like there was something mentally wrong with me. Um, yeah. I uh, had this big secret until I was in my 30s, late 30s. Yeah, as you said, yeah, you said about something about it before, yeah. Yeah, and because of other people's courage, in 1993, and here again, stop me if I, because I don't want to bore you or anyone else. Yeah, yeah, please go but on. Just round I was, on. I'll I was, just tell I you was, when to stop, okay? Was, in 1993, um, I was a co owner and operator of an audio video production house with my husband at the time. And a female duet came in to record an album. And one of the girls was a lesbian. And I was just overwhelmingly attracted to her to the point that I was like, I can't even uh, hide this. I'm enamored with this woman. And, um, uh, It was the first time I went to I, I went to my husband and I said, this is what I'm feeling this. I don't want to ruin our marriage. I'm not saying I want a divorce. I don't want to leave you, but I'm really feeling this and it's really strong. Well, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, he was like, well, I don't want to hold you back from being you. So we made an agreement that I could basically have an affair with her and be married to him. Your viewers are going to think, oh, my God, she's just a slut. But no, no, no. Um, so sorry for the wet hair. I, uh, anyway, it's okay. Go on. Uh, so. <clears throat> She uh, she lived um, an hour and a half away, and so he was comfortable with it. Well, the people in the town where we live won't know what's going on and blah, blah, blah. So we made an agreement that I could have this experience in my life. And I just kept falling more and more in love with her. And I never fell out of love with him. It's just, I wanted to be with her. And so he eventually needed me to make a choice. And I broke his heart and I chose her. So this started six years of pretending <laughs> to my mom and my siblings that um, my husband and I have had a dispute and so we're going to get a divorce. Well, no, we're just going to separate, but I'm going to be this, this friend, this woman has offered her home that I can be her roommate. And they bought it. That's how naive that is how that's the family I came from. Yeah. That's, that's kind yeah. of, and she that's came kind of, you know, she to came me. to our family holidays. She came to Christmas. She called my mom another mommy 
Uh, it was a cute little term she had called my mom, another mommy. I uh, think she, she was completely accepted by my family as Susan's best friend and roommate. And Susan's best friend just happens to be a lesbian, but Susan is not. It was just bizarre when I really look back at it. Um, wow. It's really weird because since it's the first time I've really spoken of any of this publicly, yeah, it I think, kind of sounds bizarre you know, when I replay it's, it. It's bizarre, isn't it, really? Uh, our friend Arthur says here that uh, that was a polyamorous experience, nothing con condemnable. Yeah, see, my husband and I, we were, it was all three of us. We were fine with this arrangement. I I don't know. I don't know. I just, I when he needed me to make the choice, and I understand that. Um, yeah, I mean. I totally but would he, he, he needed me to choose, because this went on for like a year. Yeah. You know. Uh, what do you, what do you think? So this was in the nineties, mid 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 nineties, maybe. That was nineteen ninety three. Well, actually, it was ninety two that I came out, and it was January of ninety three that I moved yeah. out of my marriage and moved in with my okay, female. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Just to get the, the timeline correct, so that would have been in what? That would have been twenty twenty. 24 years after Stonewall. Yeah. It's still, it, it, yeah, that was still almost quarter of a decade after Stonewall. And the change, the changes had already begun clearly uh, post, the post Stonewall events has, had clearly begun. And the, you said this was back in Missouri. No, what? actually, that was here. That was here in Arkansas, but okay, Arkansas, was, yeah, okay. Another, but anyway, yeah. it, it was still almost quarter of a century since Stonewall. Yeah, and at that point, I would have assumed, at least from my perspective, I wouldn't, wouldn't, have, I would have assumed that maybe things would have changed but this was sort of sort of one of those don't ask don't tell kind of things well when Once i again. when i uh did come, when i came out and began living what in the 90s here in the states it was referred to as an alternative lifestyle so things had lightened up enough judgmentally and socially that then you could talk about people who had lived alternative lifestyles and um, yeah and things such as that but still not like no legal rights yeah um, uh but there but there did come uh, the 90s did bring a, a greater level of comfort in just freely discussing these things. And by the way, when I came, after I came out, I met loads of people. No, I didn't meet. I knew loads of people who were living just like me. They were having relationships, but they were hiding them. They were um, gay men in a heterosexual marriage with a wife who knew that her husband was gay and that was okay. And she was like a cover for him. Um, uh, business associates that I had worked with in my audio video production house. Who I was like, oh God, I didn't know you guys were a couple. Well, because you don't, nobody would talk about it, but you had, then you have your own, what you refers to as, was referred to as a subculture, where 
you know, every, we're going to go to this place because at this place, everybody's out. So at this gathering, everybody knows that everybody's either gay, lesbian, or trans. And, and so you can just chill out and be yourself here. Um, so you were still kind of hiding. You were still kind of in the closet with like the straight people and your straight business associates. So because there were people that if they knew that I was bi, they wouldn't have done business with us anymore. Yeah. Isn't that a bit of the same even nowadays in the U.S.? At least in some states, you have this, what do you call it, religious freedom or something like that, that you can base just plain, plain out or obvious uh, discrimination. Oh my gosh. On, on, yeah, there's no religion and such. Well, I don't want to go too. I don't want to go too too much into religion, but no. Uh, well, but here's here's one example of yeah. how that kind of thinking can have an impact on our community. Yeah. Within the last, this was last summer. Last summer. Yeah. There was a news report um, on National Public Radio, which is my my primary news source. Not not touting them, but that's where I go. Okay. A bakery refused to make a wedding cake. For a lesbian couple. I heard about that. A freaking. No, uh, and a whole legal thing comes out of it. And I wish I could tell you the ultimate results. Is I, the last I heard on that is that here you can't tell somebody I'm not going to bake you a cake because you're queer. Yeah. I mean. But, I mean, that's how. Um, that's how petty some it's, people yeah, are it's really petty. Space for this issue that I no, I'm not going to make you, although that's what I do for a living. I make wedding cakes for a living. That's how I pay my, my business. You know, I can decide. I'm not going to make but, a wedding cake because you're lesbians. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. This, this is in context to the previous discussion we had uh, regarding nine, uh, six, 69 versus 20, uh, no, 93, yeah, that apparently I said something along the lines of half a century, you know, on that one, but Arthur corrected me on that being a quarter of a century. Arthur is so good at that. He's great with math. Yeah, he could, yeah, he could do, do, do stuff like that on the, on the go. Yeah, he really pays good attention to detail as well. It yeah, almost makes and, me nervous. I feel like he's breathing down our necks, you know? <laughs> yeah, and actually, uh, a while ago, we were talking about uh, this. I'll, uh, I'll say this before I put the, put the comment on, on the screen. We had, we talked about uh, talked about something along the lines of of uh, the message of or the legacy the message and legacy of stonewall riots not having reached uh the in the the entire continental us even in 50 years uh, even though it, it reached the entire globe like Japan, down under, Kiwis, etc., but not the continental US in a in quarter of a century. I and we had that these Ameri many Amer that, but still we have this Amer but still we have this, and that in, in the US it's 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 a bit backwards, you know, and. We, yet we are on streaming on a US based company or or a platform owned by a US based company uh, due to the algorithm 
I we can see this <coughs> or oh, the comments about the what kind from Dutch heretic. Uh, overall, I agree with that statement. Overall, I mean, yeah. in any society, in any society, we have individuals. Uh, who don't buy into the blanket stupidity, but yeah, yeah. overall, uh, I, and don't get me wrong. I love being an American. I mean, I yeah. was born and raised here. I'm cool with all that. I'm cool with it, but you cannot get around that, that this people are the phrase I used earlier uptight, uh, yeah. unaccepting of anything that, they consider out of the norm. Well, what the hell is norm? What the hell is normal? It's arbitrary. That is so. It's ar really what arbitrary. I, but what I consider normal, you might consider absolutely freaking bizarre. Yeah, uh, actually, so, back, back. Uh, I need to backpedal a bit. Bit say when. Um, Regarding Arthur's previous com comment that I brought up on the screen, I said, uh, Arthur said, you had said quarter of a decade okay. first. <laughs> you know, my, my brain is not. Yeah, and I love, I love. You can't get everything memory. right. You I can't get everything I right at this point. I made emoji there where he made the, the face with the tongue sticking out at you. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, anyway so what this, else, what, I, I, I don't, it's still it's still still you know feels feels a bit. How shall I put this? Backwards in a way. Yeah. That this whole thing that it hasn't reached the southern te states from New York City, and I'm not sure what what. The situation is in Alaska, but it hasn't even reached the free, uh, the Texas and such, where you had at the Bible Belt area. Yeah, yeah. Some at, some which, actually, which I think should be a a sort of a norm. I think, in my opinion, that this kind of stuff would reach the the country nationwide even though it, even though the the US consists of 50 states i think at the moment yeah well yeah 50 states and some uh, you know guam and puerto rico or and whatnot are also considered yeah, but you know, officially, but but when it comes to states, it's 50. Yeah, there are 50 stars on the flag, so yeah. Yeah, anyway, it still hasn't reached the 50, 50 no. stars. And, and I know here again, we don't want to focus on religion, and I'm all with that too, but that's what it's about in this part of the country. They yeah, eat, that, uh, yeah it, in, in, because you've got this, what they call the moral majority, yeah and these are people who seemingly believe that you can legislate people's morals also they're defining lgbt issues as a moral issue it's not but it's not a moral issue it's issue, not is a it? moral issue no, but, it, but as long as they keep tying that up and they have the freedom here in the States that yeah. you can preach anything from your pulpit that you want to. And you have huge mega churches where a lot of times, I mean, I don't watch them, but I understand that often that that's, you know, they're driving we're all we're all sick and or we're demonic or we're uh, 
I, we're perverts. Uh, we're driven by nothing but lust. Well, yeah, I've had plenty of that, but I've had also a great deal of love and close, yeah, it's, and close yeah. companionship with another woman in a genuine relationship. And if I may say so, I personally resent having it referred to as a moral issue. I also tend to somewhat resent having it referred to as a choice. Uh, you know, it, this feels, it, it feels perfectly natural to me to be who I am and feel the way about other humans that I feel, you know, I, yeah, I, I, I lead think a, what people would call a normal, productive life. I'm a happy person. I have a family. Uh, I contributed as a working person. Uh, constructively to my paying taxes and blah, 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 you know? So uh, I'm sorry that I'm going off on that tangent. Yeah. But I, I do. Yeah, it's not, it yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's not moral. No, it's not moral. I mean, it's, it, I mean, many, well, oftentimes it's, it, so many people mix mix up, like, or rather replace one with the other when it comes to, uh, say, for example, if I shall we say I say I'm a, I'm a lesbian, yeah, it or um, it doesn't mean only. That I'm attracted to females only. I'm in a sexual way. It's generally I put put it together, lesbian as both sexual and uh, romantic attraction to other women. Yes. I mean. Yes. It's not. It's not unheard of to have a pan romantic homosexual but it but many of these people who sort of how shall I put this are plain out homophobes they only take the part in which the which has the sex the sexual connotation in yeah. it yeah not not the romantic side yeah i mean i mean come on like and no. i honestly i had the most romance i had the most romance with my female partner of any relationship i've ever had i mean almost to the point of being like corny Candlelit, yeah. candlelit dinners, uh, uh, eating a picnic lunch and going out a, to some place and spreading out a blanket and, you know, enjoying the out of doors together. Uh, just quiet moments of holding hands. Yeah, I, I mean, even uh, today, even today, there's this kind of thinking uh and values it's not just the us but i just i want to just focus on the us yeah uh in this this stream but good because you, i know very little of anything else <laughs> yeah i know but on the other hand i know stuff about other countries especially my country finland but that's another conversation. Yeah. Maybe another stream with someone else. But how do you think um, you said, you said, as, well, we just talked about the fact that many people, these LGBT plus homophobes, uh, talk, talk it, they only 
talking absolutes and the only absolute end of the word is the sexual lust yeah which which can exist which can and um, per, uh, perhaps should exist in heteros in heterosexual relationships of course the you know there are plenty of asexual people who are probably breathing down my neck right now for saying this but one of the things that also are also included that are typically included in a romantic relationship yeah a romantic lust as well as sexual lust if you make any sense of that but it's those are very different yeah but they take only the sexual lust when when it they of course they think when it, it comes to straight relationships then it's okay to add in the romantic side but never for gay relationships or same you know lgbt plus relationships uh how do you figure how what did it does it look like to you now half a century later the the era from late 60s and, and then then again 70s when where where people perhaps uh how do they view the the romantic side as we, we we discussed how people viewed the sexual side but how do you think in 60s and 70s and, and maybe 80s viewed the romantic side of lgbt plus relationships well in the 60s 70s and 80s i was i was driven by it was a sexual motivation the the experimentation with the sexual mo mo motivation the sexual part of it, i was motivated by that explore exploration um and i didn't feel romantic and in love until i actually met the woman that i that i've discussed that that i moved in yeah. with. Um, yeah. so and and just from exposure in society being around different groups of people uh they don't i i don't remember anyone ever addressing the actual romantic side it's always well the nah i let rewind i don't i don't like to say always because nothing is really always but more often than not uh romance is not even considered you know it's like straight people can't seem to relate to I, I tried to explain it once i here i'm all i'm bouncing all over the place but i tried to explain once to a guy a straight guy that the way that you feel about your girlfriend that's the way i feel about my girlfriend i i respect her she's intelligent she's funny she's interesting she has a cool career uh we do lots of things together uh we have life experiences together we enjoy our lifestyle together um so it's you know it's i felt the same towards her heidi that i felt towards the man i was married to it was the yeah. same kind of love same kind of heart feeling same kind of connection but but uh, hey but but most people they don't they can't they can't seem to wrap their brains around that and they don't seem to want to listen to to want to but hey love is love you know it but it doesn't as i just said you know it, it doesn't all this is a spectrum as well as both when in regards to uh romantic orientation as well as 
sexual orientation. Uh, I know someone who's aromantic, mean, meaning basically doesn't have any romantic feelings towards towards others. But and we, I we... was prepping. I was kind of prepping for this comment from trans atheist. Uh, I get that hey, the sexuality is a spectrum. But a lot of people forget that there is also a romantic spectrum too. Uh, you don't need to be on the same part of those spectrums at the same time. Yeah. And I think that's 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 a really, really good good point you made there, translators. Um I agree. I because I've I've I have felt I have felt romantic attracted to someone of the same sex but not felt sexually attracted yeah, sure um just like that there were guys that i dated and i found them interesting and uh, a pleasure to be around and whatnot but i had no interest in having sex with them yeah so yeah and um I don't know if you or anyone else would take exception to me taking exception to la labels really bother me. I can't even tell you why, but I asked a, um, a psychiatrist yeah. uh, about labels. You know, I said, why, why do I need, why do I even have to have one? Why do I have to say, I'm not a lesbian. I'm not a lipstick lesbian. I'm a bisexual, but I'm a bisexual in a heterosexual monogamous relation. Why, why do I need a label? And his response was, we use labels. When we use labels, we eliminate paragraphs of conversation in explaining who we are. Well, what if I want to explain who I am? That label is one thing. It doesn't have all the ingredients on it. It's just yeah, a label yeah. that says bisexual female. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, what it, about all the other shit in there that I am? That's not, I'm not just that. That's part of who I am. So why would, um, yeah, I don't know indeed, what your yeah. would be on that. But the use of labeling ourselves in order to avoid paragraphs of conversation. Well, yeah, I could indeed. have just come on this platform and you could have said what you are and I can say what I am and then you could turn the camera off. Yeah, I mean, it's not always, it's not straightforward, you know, Susan? It, I yeah. mean, I, I absolutely understand those who do not wish to uh, label themselves, you know? It's not, and I kind of get, and then and then again, I get, I absolutely get those who do want to um, define themselves, define themselves no, with- Please don't misunderstand me. I in no way, I meant, and I want to make it clear. I don't, I feel, I don't feel that I need a label. It doesn't bother me, you know, I'm, I really am the type, I'm a free thinker and open-minded and I want to be as, I want to give that to others as much as I want to receive it from them. Indeed. So it doesn't bother me that others would need to be able to say I am this or I am that. Yeah. I, mean, I just, have you? I resented other people labeling me. Yeah, uh, I'll take one comment and then I'll kind of take take us a bit back to that previous topic. Okay. Trans atheist it says the problem with labels is they are quantified sometimes, and you so sometimes you cannot quantify feelings. I love trans atheists. Exactly, exactly. Uh, uh Trans atheist uh, uh, comments and conversation is always it's, just so it's amazing. I, I just, anyway, I I uh, want to kind of go back a little a bit um, with regards to the labeling. Um, 
back in the day, there was just pretty, I understand that there was just pretty much that one label, which was queer. Yeah. Uh, but how do well, you... There was, fag there was faggot. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was one. But how do you think, at, at which point did these start to change in the U.S.? As, as as well as in the English speaking world, uh, because la language often goes hand in hand with with these kind of uh, expressions. You know, I've never thought it. I have not thought about that. I would say probably somewhere in the early nineties in my personal experience. Yeah. I can't speak for the rest of the country, but yeah. in my personal experience, there actually came a time that queer was not cool. You know, that, that, that was a, um, an insult that, that you, and it became, if you were male, you were gay. And if you were female, you were a lesbian. Yeah. Um, so I would say probably sometime in the 90s. Okay, yeah. I mean, it depends, of course. I mean... Uh, On where you might... are. It's, you know, the U.S. is a big country. I mean, it I know everybody big. knows that. But you can literally go from... Okay, used to when I wanted to go to the gay clubs, because yeah. you're not going to find any of those where I am in, in, in a relatively rural area. So you had to go to the college town, right? Yeah. Which is four hours away. Four hours away in the same state, the attitude towards being gay is completely different than it is where I live in this little town. Here, there are people that if it were legal, they would stone me. Now, I'm yeah. serious. There are people who would take me out because I'm of, from Satan or something, right? Because what they've been taught. But I can drive four hours away and go to my favorite gay club, which, by the way, the first time I went to a club, I was like, yeah. oh, my God, look at this. It's wonderful. It was and when so was this? There were gay men. There were bisexual men. There were bisexual women. There were lesbians. There were. When was this? I saw my first drag show. My when I my uh, was at the same club. I was just in awe of these beautiful men. Who were? I, I know I'm way off topic now, but actually, That's in a okay. way, off topic because if it weren't for Stonewall. Where would the drag queens, where would these lovely men be? They Hot, wouldn't be. I'm they telling, wouldn't make sense. I'm, you probably think I'm just absolutely over the top. But if you've lived in the closet and been suppressed in the States up until you're almost 40, and then, and then this wonderful person takes you to your first gay lesbian nightclub. And it's like, wow, this is so cool. And that night, they happened to be, just coincidentally, a drag queen show. And these guys were gorgeous. They were dressed impeccably in these beautiful sparkling nightgowns their makeup was perfect their wigs and their hair was perfect and granted most of the guys did lip sync and they were impersonating uh here in the states there are certain uh iconic or sort of stereotypical uh impersonations that are done like barbara streisand Judy Garland. Um, and so these fellows, it was one of the most joyous, joyful nights of my life. And they were having a contest even who had the best outfit, who did the best act, and the audience got to vote on it and participate. 
it was really, really neat. But that's where that's in Fayetteville, Arkansas, you see, and the university is there. And so there's this way more laid back attitude. But, you know, my country uncle that worked at the cattle barn back in the 50s and 60s, and nobody, I didn't that, know that. That really was, sounds intriguing. You know, I didn't know that he was gay. He was my mother's brother, my mother's youngest brother. I had no idea he was gay until long after he had passed away. And one of my male cousins and I, I came out to my, to my male cousin because he was gay. I, I keep saying coming out. What I mean by that is just that I'm, sh I'm sharing for the first time with that person, this part of me. And he was like, well, you know, and I can say this because all of these people are long gone. And he said, well, you know, Uncle Doc was gay. And I was like, no, he wasn't. Yes, he was. No, he wasn't. And he was like, yeah, he would use me as cover to be with his, his male friend who was one of the cowboy guys. My uncle worked at, I don't know if you have them over there, but here in the States, we have, they're called cattle barns and they have cattle sales, usually on the weekend, where farmers and ranchers come and bring their livestock that they have for sale. And my uncle was a, what was called a caller. He would do the auctioning of the cattle. And one of the gentlemen that was a, a gentleman farmer was his friend. But I just always thought they were really two really cool guys. I loved hanging out with my Uncle Doc. But um, so when I was trying to come out to my mom and it just wouldn't come out, one example I used to her about that you can know. So I, I, the way I was trying to lay it out is, is mom, you know, you might know people that are gay, but you don't know that they're gay. And she's, oh, no, 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 no. And I, I'm the one talking to her, right? And I'm her baby, and she's not figuring this out. So finally, I'm like, Mom, Uncle Doc was gay. Oh, no, he wasn't. No, no, no. Yes, Mom. No, no. Absolute total denial. See, so that's. But he, yeah, he was a super cool guy. Um, he died mm. uh, several decades ago. But so he was an in the closet gay man in a little tiny town in northern Arkansas, where if anyone had found out, it would have been like the horrible episode that I probably shouldn't even address uh, that where he would have been. He would have been physically harmed. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. It's not a topic for this stream. Yeah. The the thing in Wyoming. Yeah, we I think it's not it's a, a topic for another another yeah. stream. Yeah. And maybe another platform. Stay on it stay on a joyful note. That, uh anyway. So, uh we have mentioned we while have, we're on here. Did I mention while we were on? I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you. We have our one hour thirty nine minutes is we've been live. Uh, I'd like to read uh, at this point before we go any any further with anything from trans atheist. Uh, diversity is beautiful. How interesting would colors be? if there was only black and whites or animals, if there were only cats and dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. It's life is so much richer, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it, and life is rich. Uh, when it comes, the diversity of life, you know, it's, and if, um, if we, if, if people could go, if people could transcend somehow and I, God knows I have no, I have no answers. I don't, I have no magic wand, yeah. I have, but, but I have lots of if onlys, Heidi. Yeah. If only, only people could let down their guard 
if only people could transcend beyond hatreds, hatred to tolerance to acceptance and just sit down and and people are interesting yeah we've all lived I mean, different life is interesting you know i mean the you thing know, is uh, and like uh for instance there there are probably going to be a couple of people watching this who didn't know before they watched it that i'm bisexual now i'm exactly the same person sitting here right this moment as i was an hour and 40 minutes ago when we started this program i'm exactly the same person the only difference is is that now they know i'm bisexual yeah indeed does that make just, me different? just the same does that make you not love me anymore does that make you not like me anymore does that make you afraid of me now yeah it's it's that, just if that's I mean, why it's, you know so why can't we just talk about it yeah i mean even even though even though they didn't, didn't uh know it prior to this live stream it doesn't doesn't nullify the fact that you've been the same same susan for for, for 70 years up until today it yeah. doesn't change anything you know change see but there but that's one of the things that happens here still these 51 years later after stonewall where you learn this thing about this person and all of a sudden it's like it nullifies everything yeah. well i don't want anything to do with you because you're queer yeah yeah indeed it's you know it's just, and my, i don't uh, i don't really get it because i really got and i got really lucky with my guy you know i mentioned i've, I've been in a heterosexual monogamous relationship yeah you mentioned years. and yeah. and came out there i want for the and it felt and just like and here's what and i'll get to my point believe it or not it was and i said he was the first one that i said look here's who i am and this is a thing about me you might want to know if you're thinking about being involved with me yeah and he was like so well okay whatever you know and it's been that well well i've also encountered people that the moment they know that it was like flipping a switch yeah i had one I guy get it. i had one guy stop his car and say get out of my car I literally put me out I, luckily i was in a town and there were people that i knew so it wasn't like i was stranded on the side of a deserted a haunted highway somewhere yeah deserted was the outback we happened to be out on a sunday drive and we drove past the house where i had my first lesbian sexual experience and it triggered a memory in me that memory and i just out loud just like i'm talking to you now i went yeah oh wow oh i remember that house oh golly gee back in 19 so and so I, that's where I had my first lesbian experience with my best girlfriend's older sister. Yeah. Best he older sister. Him. He yeah, slammed was... the brakes on and yeah. reached across me and flung the door open in this little Bronco we were in and said, get the fuck out of my car. Yeah. It, it just, and I was like, what? Just what? crazy. So you see, I've had it both extremes, and yeah. You know, but my point with the, the coming out thing is like this right here, right now. I feel so good and so light and so free. I feel like this freed uh, a lightness that I didn't know there was a certain heaviness there, and I think it's because I've never publicly discussed this issue. And there's something just oh, where you just kind of go, oh, 
this is who I am. And now everybody knows it. And guess what? I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, now the, in, but hey, you know, yeah, I mean, I, be, I became, we, be, we became acquainted uh, perhaps a year or so ago through a, through a, a, for a certain YouTuber's yes uh, chats. Um, a bit less than a year ago. A bit, I, a bit less than a year ago, maybe nine or ten months ago or so ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... If I'm not, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you were moderator on that YouTuber's channel where I was... Time, at the time, at the time, no, uh, not yet at at that point, yeah. now I am. Anyhow, yeah. uh, the thing is that. Well, remember how I, I, I think it's probably fine to say this. Shut me up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, remember when I built up the courage to DM you and ask you about your transition? Yes. Yeah, I remember because that. Because I yeah. was still even in a, a, a state of mind even then that this might really piss her off. She might say, yes. it's none of your effing business. Yes, no, you yeah, that? I mean, at, at some point in my life, it was, uh, at some point in my life, maybe at the beginning of the transition, I would have just told you to fuck off quite, quite yeah, frankly. Yeah, fuck off, it's none of your business, but yeah. But there, but was, now, there was something, now, yeah. but there was something about you and your personality that I was it's, sensing that I just like, I really like this person and I really want to know her better. Yeah. I and mean, it, yeah. So I had to grow the balls to just come out to you and assume that it, you would be okay with, you know, and it worked out great because now I like yeah, to say, it, and we're, yeah, we're yeah, friends. Yeah, a, yeah, yes, think, yeah, less than a year later, here we are, YouTube. And, YouTubing yeah. stuff, you know. Uh, anyway, this I think I want to just kind of tie this back to this, you know, what we talked about it or what we've been talking about it in general here. Um, I mean, the fact that I that I'm out and proud that I can be who I am it it's the work of your generation and the and the bit older your generation it, it's it, it's been a, it's just mind-boggling really to think about it uh, uh, I would like to share a comment uh, with regards to this, just this prior prior uh, conversation from trans atheist. Well, uh, well done, Susan. Thank you for sharing. Happiness you are showing is addictive. And thank you, and trans. Trans uh, Susan, trans atheist. I couldn't. I agree more. Uh, I think in the oh, following. <laughs> oh, Susan. Well, seriously, I'm uh, sorry. I didn't. I didn't realize that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's all right. It's all right. Uh, I think it's. We've been on here for Aaron fifty. Yeah. Uh, I, really I think, think we'll be. <laughs> I think we'll be wrapping up. Yeah. Uh, we'll be wrapping up in 10 minutes in 10 okay. minutes from now uh i want to go through a few things before we go uh so what do you what is susan, susan what do you think or maybe perhaps three most important things that uh, or the biggest, most important or 
well, yeah, most important things uh, that the Stonewall legacy or the Stonewall three most important things that had that the so that the Stonewall riots left as a legacy that we have that we are still seeing uh, even 50 51 years later I think that we can learn from Stonewall that Sorry, I'm still feeling a little emotional here. Yeah, uh, take your time. Uh, okay. Take your time. The um, going back to the courage because that is what really just is always in the forefront of my mind when I think about Stonewall. Um, first of all, uh, the legacy that it's okay to be who you are. It's important to be who you are. It's important to stand up for the rights of others. Those people stood up for rights of people who were not even born yet. I'm sure that they, they probably had no idea the long living impact that their actions would have for those of us today. But the legacy that they are leaving me personally is to have courage, to be who I am, and to respect everyone in our community. I love that now it's gone to LG. B T Q. As I mentioned earlier, there was a narrow window of time when the word queer was no, no that was bad. To be a transvestite was bad. There were those within our culture who would label and say that, you know, the transvestites at Stonewall they weren't accepted even then there was a lot of one trans had to forcefully take the stage and and wrench the mic in order to be heard yeah, so indeed. i think that we have the legacy that i, I not being trans i i can't uh intellectually or psychologically relate but I can sure as hell respect. So that's what I mean when I say in, in our, what in the States is called a sub culture because we're queers mm. or whatever, whatever the label they want to put on us. Let's at least within our own community, love and respect and accept and be tolerant of one another because those people were fighting for that too. Not just how everybody else views us, but how we treat and love and respect one another. So I don't know if that actually answers three. I, I think it does. I, I mean, I think it does. Yeah. yeah. Hurry, be who you are and respect everybody. Exactly. Thank you, Susan. You're welcome. <sighs> Sorry. No. Uh, I think at this point we've been on for Aaron fifty five minutes close close right. now. And, and I could now, sure I think we'll I, I think we'll start wrapping up. Yes, I know Susan what you, I know what you want. <laughs> uh anyway, is there any do you, Susan, do you have any uh, uh, closing comments, perhaps? Anything you wish to say say to uh, possibly um, elderly, elderly LGBT plus? Or I think more importantly, 
to give priority to young LGBT plus people, say early teens, early to mid teens, right now, is there anything you want to tell them for the their own well-being and future as an LGBT person and to be to live a full video of as a queer person? Basically, it would be the same things that I've said throughout this broadcast. Yeah. It would okay. be, okay, you know, love yourself and don't, and this is easier said than done, young people. It's easier said than done, but it it can be done. Work on the slings and arrows that other might throw at you. Let them bounce off. Let it, yeah. Do your best to just let that bounce off and be your beautiful, open-minded, free-thinking, critical thinker. Be you. And Thank allow you. yourself to experience love. Now, thank you, Susan. I'll take one more comment from on the screen from trans atheist. Well said. You don't have to understand a person to respect a person. Yeah. Now, we'll be wrapping up now. Uh, I would like to remind you that the um, last week, last Saturday, when I was chatting with Mr. Katz, I forgot to say or mention slash advertise a Discord server that I run, uh, LGBT plus safe space server on Discord. Uh, the link for the link to that server will be down below in the description box. There will be also the channel's email in the description box down below. Now, uh, please like and subscribe. It'll help my channel to grow. Now, Susan also, Susan already said, said her her message to LGBT plus youth, and I'll go for, for the end, I'll go for mine, for especially the youth, but why not the adults? Uh, younglings and adults, you are worthy of love. You are special in your own way. You deserve to be loved and you deserve all the best in life. Now, we need to love you and leave you. And I'll see you next week for another LGBT plus contact. Thank you. Bye.